Welcome to Sunshine Cathedral's Queer God Squad. It's Tuesday, April 16th, 2024. I'm Reverend Dr. Darrell Watkins, the Senior Minister here at Sunshine Cathedral. I am Reverend Dr. Robert Griffin, the Executive Minister. Faith and religion can be complicated for the LGBTQ plus community. Surveys show that evangelical faith is the justification for the greatest attacks on the LGBTQ plus community. I am Reverend Kevin Tisdall, the Minister of Education. The Queer God Squad is going to explore our religious community. Let's explore the big news of the day and what it means to you. This is live and then we are available on demand. We are available on all smart televisions and your favorite social media. At Sunshine Cathedral, we're here to tell you that you're God's miracle, not God's mistake. This is the Sunshine Cathedral perspective. Here is, quote, the lake of fire, end quote, Queer people will burn in for a thousand years. Wait, what? <laughs> Around a decade ago, Alan Hunsberger, a Wild Rose candidate and minister with the House Church in Tofield in Canada, stirred controversy with his views on homosexuality. In a blog post from 2011, Hunsberger suggested that individuals who continue to choose, <laughs> choose their sexual orientation will suffer in the afterlife condemning them to eternal punishment in the, quote, lake of fire, hell, end quote. The concept of the lake of fire has deep roots in religious beliefs, appearing in Christianity, particularly in the book of Revelation. It is depicted as a place of punishment for the wicked after death. In America, there are many like Hunsberger still, striving to spread fear among those who wish to lead an authentic life of truth and freedom. We recognize that religious texts, such as the Bible, can be misused to justify discrimination. A recent uh, video went viral characterizing the lake of fire uh, for homosexuals, that they will burn in it for a thousand years. It drew on long, tired tropes of interpretations of the Bible that are designed for power, control, and fear, often <laughs> also for money. <laughs> Shock. Otherwise, why would the concept of the lake of fire be weaponized to condemn individuals for who they are. At Sunshine Cathedral and Sunshine Cath uh, and the Queer God Squad, we advocate for a theology of love and acceptance. We reject the idea that anyone should be punished or marginalized based on factors beyond their control. Uh, I have a million things to say about this, and we don't have a million minutes. So uh, I'm going to make some choices. But the, five, the, the fires of Scripture represent cleansing. Mm. You know, you refine the gold uh, and fire. You, you, you burn up the, the, the waste, and then what is left is, is good something. Uh, you know, diseased blankets or whatever, uh, forever. You know, if someone had, you just burn the blanket, burn the clothes, burn the sheets, because that cleanses, that gets rid of all the, the germs, the disease, the, you know, whatever. So this, this fiery thing isn't always about uh, hurting someone. It might be about healing them, mm. in, in fact. Uh, when the Apostle Paul on the island of Malta was bitten by a snake, he flung the snake into a fire. And so the, the fire is what sort of saves him from the viper. Uh, and then everyone said, you know, because he had been attacked, that he, was, he must have deserved it, that the gods must have been punishing him. Mm. And then they marveled when he didn't get sick or whatever. So, so the Bible is, is very symbolic. And if we're not gonna explore the symbols, we're just gonna get it wrong. A lot. In the book of Revelation, the beast and all who worship him are defeated and tossed into a lake of fire. Revelation was written about the year 100, some seven decades after Jesus' death. The person writing was exiled on an island, and we're told the writer is John of Patmos. That was the island. Uh, but this John is unlikely any John we've encountered before in Scripture, despite traditions to the contrary. So someone 70 years after Jesus, that would be 70 years after Jesus. I don't know if I mentioned this, but that would be 70 years after Jesus, who most likely never knew Jesus, is isolated on an island by himself or with very few people. That's what isolated means. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the context where he's writing this bizarre story. He's exiled, sort of, it's kind of a prison. Well, who has put him there? Yeah. Well, and whoever's put him there is probably who's writing against or writing about. So he's on this island writing this bizarre story, and he has no idea that his story is going to wind up in something called the Bible. 
And indeed it won't for a long time. So keep that in mind. And if I said nothing else, one's discomfort with the text might already be lessened. <laughs> but wait, there is more. Revelation is in a genre of literature which is highly symbolic, known as apocalyptic literature. Apocalyptic writing is resistance literature. So the story is protesting injustices, maybe by the government that has put him on this island where he has nothing to do but write crazy things. It's protesting injustices, and the bizarre sci-fi imagery cannot be taken literally. There's nobody walking around with multiple heads. Uh, th these monsters have these multiple heads. There's no woman uh, uh, running from some monster pregnant. There is, there is no uh, monster opening up its mouth for a flood of water to come <laughs> chasing after the woman. There's, you can't, you cannot, you cannot. And, and also, you, you, you cannot take any of that literally. So the beast that will be defeated so horribly in the story is the Roman emperor. Yay. The imagery of the tyrant being badly defeated and forever made to pay for his crimes against humanity is meant to facilitate catharsis. It's supposed to make people feel better, not worse. It's not supposed to scare people. It's supposed to encourage them. The bad guys can't win forever. That's the good news in this. It's basically saying evil may prevail for a time, but it cannot win forever. The hateful, vicious, violent destroyer of lives will be remembered as a monster. And one day our people will thrive, even as the monster is forever reviled, if not completely forgotten. That's the comforting message to oppressed people. That's the beast and the lake of fire dreamt up on an island by someone in isolation seven decades after Jesus. And that story won't become part of an official Bible until 350 years after Jesus' death. The first hundred years of Christians didn't have this story, and it would be another two centuries before Christians everywhere would have access to it. It's an allegory about an oppressive government, and it wasn't officially scripture until almost the year 400. So relax. <laughs> The lake of fire was the punishment dreamt up, dreamt up for tyrants, not for lovers. No one is going there because they love somebody or because they told the truth or because they asked real questions or because they, they, lived, they lived the life that they have been given. Threatening gay folk with this mythical burning lake is at best ignorance and at worst, cruel manipulation. In either case, ignore it. Hmm. LGBTQ people have the support of not only progressive theologians, but also of the professional guilds for sociology, psychology, psychiatry, pediatric medicine, social work, and law. This debate is settled everywhere, except right-wing churches and in politics, where lawmakers propose hateful laws to placate hateful constituents and donors. If there's a sin in this whole scenario, it is some jerk using literary imagery to torment people who by nature happen to be same gender loving or gender non-conforming. Hans Perger should be ashamed and the rest of us should laugh at his ridiculous conclusions. Well, why is it always the gay folks has got to go to the lake of fire? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of other stuff if they're going to use in the Bible to condemn people uh, to, to some place. Why aren't that always included? But it's, I think, you know, it's money, weaponizing, telling people what to be afraid of, uh, control, conversion, all this other stuff. Uh, and it's made up. You know, it's just, it's myth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not quit hanging your coat on it because it doesn't exist. Well, you know, sometimes they'll tell us, the the, the, the they'll say, it's either all true or it's none true. Well, then I'm sorry you got no truth because then it's, it's not all true. true. Exactly. <laughs> now, and things can be more nuanced than that, but I, I get so furious. I mean, you and Michael are together, what, now, 80, 90 years? 36 Eight, years. 36 years. <laughs> We're together 24. And that people who idolize a man working on his third or fourth marriage and his, and his uh, extramarital affairs and, and hush money with porn stars and blah, blah, blah that, that, that they would threaten or condemn or judge us, uh, it, it, it is beyond belief. And so, uh, yeah, no. Uh, first of all, Gay is fine. Gay is good. <laughs> Second of all, there's no lake of fire. Uh, and third of all, if there was, uh, loving somebody isn't what would get you there. It's not going to be the one. <laughs> I went in the front door 
and out the back door of three different um, theological institutions, um, Dutch Reform, mm -hmm. um, Episcopalian, mm -hmm. and Catholic. Mm -hmm. And each time that we got to the Book of Revelation, my classmates reinforced their thought that I was um, a heretic because I shared with them the idea that the John that you're reading about in Revelation, that supposedly wrote Revelation, is not the same John that you met earlier in our faith stories. As we went through it, and each professor in all three of the denominations said, no, this is the way it is. Now, I understand that there are still some Bible schools that will tell different stories, but the professors told the class the right thing. So if you're in a church where the preacher is still telling you that the book of Revelation is written just as it was, and it's telling the story about all of these multi-headed monsters and these lakes of fires, they're lying. Yeah. Simply put, they're they lying. Better. They know better. It's no better than reading Edgar Allan Poe mm -hmm. and the stories that he's told. And I think that most of the time he wrote, um, he had to have been on something. He was. He, he had to have been on something. John was high on something. Yes. Right. So yes. just think of John in the uh, who wrote the book of Revelation in that same vein. He's telling a story. And again, we talked about what he's saying. He's talking about how the government is a terrible thing <laughs> and they're destroying him. They've put him on this damn island and all I can do now is get high and write, cr write crazy <laughs> shit. <laughs> yes. And you said, you talked about there's some Bible schools that are still teaching, you know, like mm -hmm. they're dogmatic and they're just, and uh, they're just trying to hold the old doctrines or whatever. Um, but I, and I always tell I've been saying this for decades, that there are couplings of words, like there are words that should never go together. Christian counselor, <laughs> prayer warrior, and Bible college. Amen. Those things do not, don't, don't, don't do those. Don't say anything. <laughs> Thank you. And all God's people say <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so I just want to, I, uh, uh, I just want to, uh, we've been tackling some heavy topics this week, and uh, we get a little excited or whatever, but that's because we are, we are excited to help people recover from religion, religious trauma and Bible abuse. And uh, some people just walk away, and that, that's an option. That's mm -hmm. the thing you can do. But there's, there's so much good we can do together. We can have our centers of, of, of gathering. We can, we can work together to, to alleviate pain and suffering. We can love each other. Uh, the whole thing about funerals where you, get, where you just help each other bear that grief and weddings where you help each other celebrate these new beginnings. And whenever you have any sort of confirmation or baptism, these little kids around, they just bring joy into our lives. There's so much good. If we could just have, and Bonhoeffer pro proposed this, if we could have a religionless Christianity, mm. we'd have something worth having. And that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to deconstruct and sometimes destroy <laughs> the, uh, the ugly part, the theology part. Theology is God talk. And God, by definition, can't be defined. And so all these people who say, this is what it is, I think sometimes the agnostics and the atheists are closer. They'll say, well, I don't know, or I can't prove it. Or, you know, that's an honest answer. And so I, I would much rather people say, well, I believe, mm -hmm. I don't know why I believe, but right now I believe this, but I can't prove it. And I'm open to hearing other, you know, other experiences. That's faith to me. This, it has to be this way and I'm not hearing anything else. That's not faith. Mm. That, you know, we walk by faith, not by sight, not by proof, right? So we're just trying to save what is good uh, about this social institution that we call religion or the church or spirituality or community. We, we want to highlight what is good and excise all that is abusive and bad and unjust. And uh, we're passionate about it because we want people to be happy. We want people to be safe. Uh, we want there to be justice in the world. We've dedicated our lives to it. Yes. So if we get a little, if we get a little head up, as we used to say, don't get, um, like, don't, don't be too annoyed. Don't, 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 don't be too put off. Uh, we just love you, and yeah. we just are tired of people being mean to you. Yes. And uh, that, and that's what we're here for. Well, that's today with the Queer God Squad. We want to thank you for joining us. We're here daily at 3 p.m. to have some fun and to discuss what our LGBTQ plus community is talking about. Sunshine Cathedral is the world's largest progressive queer church. Progressive queer and God are words that naturally should go together, and we are all in this together. Remember that. You are God's miracle, not God's mistake. Until the next time, we are the Queer God Squad. Goodbye.